come on. <laughs> We're here on some serious business. Yes. <laughs> You're seeing it right, people. But today, I was in Cobham attending an open training session. So in the video, I'm going to let you guys know exactly what I observed, what went down, and how my day went visiting Cobham today. So my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit that like button as well too. Share your thoughts and opinions. But before we get into anything, today's video was brought to you by Parimatch UK. How would you guys like to win a £50 free bet? This season, Parry Match UK have launched their new, completely free-to-play football prediction game called Hattrick Hunt. This means that every single week, you will get the opportunity to predict three scores from the Premier League with three rewards for each correct prediction that you get right. And you want to try and get all three correct because if you do so, you will be rewarded with a £50 free bet. That's how it works, my friends. So as you guys can see on screen, these are my scoreline predictions for this week. I'm going for a 3-1 win against Burnley because Burnley play an open game of football. I respect them for that, but it comes at their detriment. To move on, I feel like Brentford versus Man United might be that surprise result this weekend. I feel like Brentford have played so well against big teams. They've had such an unlucky fixture list playing against so many big teams in consecutive order. I feel like they're all at a point right now. And for the final prediction, I think that Man City and Arsenal will cancel each other out. So my friends, do you guys agree with my predictions? If you'd like to get involved yourself, click on the link below. And obviously you must be 18 plus or over and full terms and conditions apply. So I'd like to say thank you to Parrymatch for sponsoring today's video. And I don't want to waste any time, but I want to discuss how my day went today at Cobham. Now, I have to say shout out to Parrymatch UK for hooking me up with this open training session tool. I'm not going to lie, I felt like a kid inside. It's them ones where it's like, listen, I'm a grown man, I'm an old guy right now. So of course, you know, externally I was playing it cool. I was being composed, but internally I was like, a kid inside, man. I was excited. I was gassed. And it was a very early start to my morning. I mean, I set my alarm for like 6.45, but I actually woke up at 5.15, so I missed out on an hour and a half of sleep. It wasn't the best start to the day, but <laughs> I guess I was just excited for this day today. So, of course, I had to link up with the one and only Matisse Armani. You know, we linked up at Wimbledon. We got the train from Wimbledon, of course, to Cobham. And then it was like a 10 minute walk to the training ground. Cobham, very beautiful area, very nice area. And, you know, as we're walking through to obviously meet up with everyone, I have to say one of the things that really made today great is how welcoming all the staff were. I mean, like really, really welcoming, very nice. They talk to you, you know, they show a lot of interest and they make you feel comfortable, which is the important thing. So they've definitely hired a lot of good people. And I want to quickly say shout out to Jason Branford. Jason today, man, it was really nice to meet you. Um, he's the photographer taking all the amazing photos this season. And yeah, yeah, very nice. I've met him, very nice guy. But to start the day off, there was actually a Q&A session with Carlo Guidagini alongside Lee Parker. Uh, Lee Parker, you know, very classy guy. Very nice guy. You know, Carlo Gudagini was asked a lot of interesting questions. A lot of young fans were there. And I was thinking to myself, like, if you were a kid and you were attending a day like this, you must be, like, absolutely gassed. You must be so ecstatic. Um, a lot of budding uh, goalkeepers in the making were asking Gudagini questions. Obviously, Matisse asked a question, and I had to ask him one as well. And my question to Carlo was, what are the details in a goalkeeper's game that separates good goalkeepers from great goalkeepers and i thought carlo gave like a really insightful answer of course little details like you know more your mentality how you focus in game how you look to maintain your focus and concentration in game and how you then like handle your mental so it does seem like the more clarity you have as a goalkeeper, the more confident you are, the more in control you are. That tends to be the overall separator between the great goalkeepers and the good ones. But yeah, it was nice from Carlo. He was very engaging. And straight after that, we attended the open training session. Now, one of the main rules was you weren't allowed to take any videos or photos there in case any like, you know, tactical stuff was being worked upon. And so nothing gets baited out which is fair enough. So we had to watch through like a netted fence. Naturally, you don't want balls blasted our way, especially on a, oh my God, today. If there was one thing that ruined the day today was the weather. I clearly was not prepared for the weather today. 
I wore the wrong attire completely. This morning though, it was sunny, it was bright. So I, f I actually even brought sunglasses with me thinking, okay, this is exactly how I'm envisioning this day to be if I'm gonna go to Cobham. So obviously, yeah, reality hit me straight in the face. So I guess it was no surprise to see all the players in their snoods, you know, all like, you know, long sleeves, all protected against very nasty weather today. And they started things off by doing light training drills. So that was involving like, of course, warm ups, a lot of like rondos at the start. And that then moved on to like shooting practice and uh, finishing practice, which was nice. And you really see like the technical levels of these guys up front. And personal but there were some nice little distractions alongside taking your focus away from um just watching the players train and one of those distractions was john terry he was right there today and i'm not gonna lie i spoke to john terry for a little bit top guy so easy to talk to and he's like one of those guys where he'll actually ask you questions back you know ask you know, we joked about all the kids being hyperactive um you know sp speaking about the season uh football you know, I even said to him, it's a shame that guy's like Conor Gallagher ain't getting enough credit this season. He agreed with me on that one. But just a blessed guy entirely and, you know, and it actually engages back. So, you listen, John Terry's one of my favourite players since I was young. I actually even said to him, I thanked him uh, for this time years, years back. But basically, we played against Liverpool. We beat them 2-1 courtesy of Jasper Gronkia's wonder goal. And that was a game which secured us Champions League football. And basically, by dab into that game, I was in Ghana at the time as a kid. But to get to the game, to get to Liverpool, he actually took the plane because it was the cheapest option. So on the plane journey back, all the players at the time were on that same plane. So obviously my dad, uh, you know, went up to John Terry and he asked if he can get an autograph book signed for myself. And two other like small little like Man United fan kids at the time who were there. And John Terry was so nice, like, you know, he signed his autograph, put his name there, then he offered to go around the plane and collect all the autographs of all the players. And for all the times players put the autographs in the book and didn't put their names there, he wrote their names there instead. So listen, it's not like it's the maddest thing ever, but nice little gestures. And like growing up, I always saw John Terry as that guy who gives more back to the fans and really engages and really like embraces that raw responsibility he has. So it was nice to finally like met him and nice to have spoken to him today. Uh, top, top guy, got nothing bad to say about him. And then after that, of course, after a few little like draining things, it came time for photos. You guys have been seeing all the photos I'm taking with players and I'm thinking to myself, all right, tomorrow I need to get my ass in the gym because, yo. <laughs> Yeah, I'm eating too much, man. Clearly, you like, uh, it's, it's not a good look right now. But it was actually really nice talking to the players. Um, of course, I'd say one of the guys that stood out to me was Nicholas Jackson. It was a cold, wet day, but he had really good energy. You know, came up to me and with his, yes, bro, how you doing? You know what I mean? We, we, we took off photos with him. Reese James, I took a photo with him as well. I felt like Reese might have recognized me. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but I got the vibe that we recognized each other because. Now, last time I went to a game this season was the Forest game and I got like tickets to, to hospitality and I saw Reese there as well. So it was nice to see him. And obviously all the players were very patient, taking your photos, very cool, very blessed. Um, yeah, just a good day out in general. Now I know that there was some confusion because certain players like Trevor Jalibur has been reported that he's injured and won't be taking part for Brentford, but he was actually doing the partial team training that has been described. And, you know, of course, when players are injured, it doesn't mean that they can't move, that they can't walk or anything like that. They're not in like a casket. It just means that they're not fully ready to be matched with, to play an intense game of Premier League football. So they're building up their stamina, they're building up their fitness. There was a lot of that there. That's why Reese James was also spotted taking part in partial team training. But, you know, there was talks that he might be back in two weeks. That is not going to be the case whatsoever. He's still going to need a little bit of time. But it's always nice to see him moving on the fields. And I just felt like, you know, he looked very, um, you know what I mean? I don't know what the word is, but like very like a streamlined, uh, you know, like his physique looked really good. And to be fair, you know, one of the players whose physiques really impressed me was Conor Gallagher. I, I just noticed that his thigh muscles are like huge, like they're, they're massive. And it's not surprised me why he looks a lot more powerful this season, um, 100%. But obviously, like when you're beside like all these Prem ballers, obviously a footballer's physique is going to be, you know, uh, you know, naturally fitted for the game, right? Suited for the game. So I feel like a bit of a boulder alongside most of these guys to be honest with you but 
yeah, it was all good. It was a shame that the weather was so dead though. Wow, the rain was diabolical today. Like, I, I felt like I was suffering to be a fan. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm out there in the cold. My forehead is below like minus zero. Like, I can't even feel my fingers. I'm just like, my teeth are just like chattering away. I was just like, oh, this isn't what I wanna be doing. This isn't the ideal, optimum environment for right now. And you know what I mean? So they, gave, they gave us like a free football to get like, you know, player signatures. And obviously I've got a few autographs here. I can't tell you who they come from, I'm not gonna lie, but <laughs> it was raining, right? So players are trying to like put their autographs on the ball and it's not working with the marker pin. Trying my best using my big jacket to create a little like force field barrier against the Wayne. Just looking like an absolute beg to be honest with you. And um, yeah, it didn't really work out high in visions, but I guess it's my fault for not bringing my spare home shirt and getting that sign I just wasn't thinking at all so hopefully another time in the future Parry Match want to hook me up you know I'll most definitely be there hopefully during the summertime when Porsche's got the barbecue on you know what I mean so <laughs> that's how my day went today um like I said very gassed of being there um not actually my first time at Cobham uh back in the day there used to be the supporters like a uh, fan group tournament so there'd be like Chelsea fan groups from like, you know, let's say Europe, America, et cetera, et cetera. And every summer in Cobham, there'd be like a big football tournament there, barbecues, stuff like that. It was sick. Um, I don't know why they stopped that. It's a shame they have. They should bring something like that back. 100% they should bring something like that back. But who knows how that works in like this like social media era. Like as you're seeing on screen, my photo of Raheem Sterling, um, yeah, the rain was unrelenting. It was just getting in all our faces. It was getting everywhere. Like, like, <laughs> it was a bit of a madness, not gonna lie. So if this was like, you know, like a nice bright spring day, it would have been like a perfect day. But listen, I'm not complaining really, am I? I mean, I was able to go to Cobham today, see the players, get some autographs, see around the place too. So, you know what I mean? It, it, it's nice after doing this uh, channel for so many years, I was able to get an opportunity like this, so I'm very humble and grateful for that. So my friends, that is basically my day out in Cobham. I hope you guys enjoy, and hopefully I get to go right there again at some point soon and do another video like this. And on that note, I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lions TV. I'll see you guys later with some more videos.